I'm going to come right out and say it. While the original Children of the Corn had some interesting ideas, a decent cast with Linda Hamilton, Peter Horton, Courtney Gaines, and especially John Franklin as Isaac, and an iconic poster, it's one of my least favorite Stephen King adaptations. The film plays into the creepy killer kid subgenre that the younger generation will one day violently turn on its elders, but overall, the whole thing fell flat on me, and the less said about the ten sequels, the better. Sure, Children of the Corn, 2023, was actually made in 2020 and not released until now, so that didn't give me much confidence, but I wanted to give this newest reimagining of the King's short story a fighting chance. So here goes. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Children of the Corn is new in select theaters and available on demand and digital download on March 21st. It's directed and written by Kurt Wimmer. When the adults of a small Nebraska town vote to destroy their crucial cornfields in favor of government subsidies, the kids disagree and want to be heard, but for different reasons. Bo, played by Elena Camporis, is a bright-eyed teen looking forward to leave town and go to college. She thinks the adults have ruined the corn crop with chemical fertilizers and pesticides, but feels there's a more natural solution through protest and being more environmentally conscious. But while Little Eden, played by Kate Moyer, agrees with Bo, her reasons are much more diabolical, as she has made contact with an entity known as He Who Walks. While the adults have been busy doing adult things, Eden has been building a child army in the middle of the cornfield, and Eden uses this wedge between the real-world problems of the adults and the idealistic views of the youth to strike up a bloody revolution. So yeah, this isn't just a story about a couple who comes across a strange town full of children without an adult around. This most modern version of Children of the Corn is an origin story, and given the world's current situation, it's quite a politically themed origin story. And you know what? I kind of liked it. I liked it a whole lot. Now, Children of the Corn isn't a perfect film. The CGI is hit and miss, mostly miss, with one strange sequence where a kid's face turns into a bunch of corn leaves and another one of a badly burned kid that leaves a lot to be desired. There's also a somewhat controversial decision to actually show He Who Walks, which is something the original film never did. I won't show a picture of He Who Walks and spoil it, but he does bear a strong resemblance to a certain monosyllabic talking tree from Guardians of the Galaxy. They do amp up the menace by having he who walks mostly in the background and seen only in snippets, but of course there's a big reveal that is supposed to be shocking, but given the overabundance of CG in bigger budgeted movies, it comes off as lackluster. That said, this is a surprisingly well-acted film. Aleda Camporis is great in the lead role as the well-intentioned Bo. Yes, she is naive and idealistic with her beliefs that really don't consider real adult problems like paying bills, taxes, and actually supporting all of the children's livelihood, but her delivery does not feel self-centered. Camporis is one of the key factors in why this film works. She's a great lead. The other is little Kate Moyer, who delivers a powerhouse performance as Eden, the kitty cult leader. Usually, child actors are not convincing to me, and most of the time annoying, in that you can see the child actor through the performance. Moyer is wonderfully terrifying as Eden. She's Greta Grunberg with a bloodlust, which to some people is an oxymoron. How dare you! It's such a treat seeing this little monster take such glee in the murderous rampage she's incited. While this isn't the bloodiest of films, I was surprised at how bloodthirsty it actually becomes. There are a lot of hangings and a whole lot of people dying off screen and bodies lying about, but still, there are some key scenes with some splattery gore that leaves the children covered in the red stuff, which makes it all the more disturbing. Okay, I've put it off long enough. Yes, this does get political. There are quite a few scenes where the children agree to protest and speak up against the wasteful, selfish older generation. This disagreement about the health of the environment is used as the impetus of the conflict of the entire film. 
But while talk of government subsidies and environmental pollutants is not the most thrilling, much less the most chilling of subjects for a horror movie, it does serve in making it a more modern story. Thankfully, this level of politics is brought up and quickly shucked away. I had to put one corn pun in there. Now, there is a theme of children rising up against the previous generation and blaming them for all of the current problems, but that's hardly new. It's been a theme in films since the 70s. In the wrong hands, this would have come off as a story about protesting kids and the adults who simply don't understand them, making the kids the unlikely heroes in this situation. But director Kurt Wimmer is no spring chicken. He did the excellent and underappreciated Equilibrium and the pretty okay Ultraviolent. He was born in 1964, so he has a bit more of a mature perspective on this sort of thing, and actually manages to show all sides of the argument in a realistic light with all of the goods and bads that come with it. You don't often see that in modern cinema. Sure, the kids have a point, but still they're not justified in their bloodthirsty rampage. While some might see this as a film enabling the current crop of protesting kids, it also functions as a cautionary tale of how easily youth can be manipulated by benevolent forces. It's surprisingly sophisticated for a reboot of an overlong horror franchise. And that's why I give Children of the Corn 2020... How dare you! Okay, 2023, my recommendation. I know, I'm as shocked as you are. It's preachy but it shows the horrors of preaching and following like sheep. It's actually quite terrifying in the way the kids, especially Eden, show their truly monstrous side. Yes, he who walks isn't great, but for the most part, I was surprisingly impressed with this latest installment, which is the best one I've seen since the original. And that's something I find truly impressive. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside 